everyone, this is Jenny. Thanks for stopping by the blog today. I'm going to share a pretty quick card using some uh, just loose watercolors as a background for some uh, heat embossed uh, thank you stamps or stamps for thank you cards. Um, I am using the Canson XL watercolor paper. Uh, it is a cold press and it is 140 pound. It comes in a big pad um, and I bought mine from Michael's. They were two for one or no, maybe buy one, get one half off. Um, and it's a really good deal. I cut them down to like sort of A2 card size or five by seven and uh, they're great to have on hand. It's not the best watercolor paper you could use, but it's great for things like this. Love the cold press and the texture it gives. So I'm using my Gansai Chambi uh, watercolors here. They are so fresh and beautiful and always um, just, just the most gorgeous colors. It, if I want to keep something light and bright and um, clean, fresh looking, then these are the ones I grab. As you can see there, <laughs> um, I have a tendency to pick the same colors, this sort of teal, um, turquoise and cornflower blue and a pink. And I really just go over some wet on wet techniques on this piece of watercolor paper and I dry in between and then I go back again and do some other things and it's a very intuitive very relaxing process that um, that really you just have to get into and see how it works for yourself. I knew I wanted to have like a heavier color at the bottom right corner which is sort of what I gravitate towards so I um, that's what I did but I did do a good bit of drying in between because when it dries in between and I can see what puddles that helps me decide where the next layer sort of of darker colors is going to go. And I'm trying to basically mimic some, not necessarily alcohol inks, although that, that is definitely, you know, um, somewhat of a look um, that I'm going for, but mostly more like kind of a, a natural stone or something that's um, found in nature that's a random kind of vein of different colors and has a sort of thread through it that combines it all which is going to be my gold watercolor. So I'm going to continue to use uh, several of these colors in different blues and then a darker blue here at the end and I, you can see I go through and just really layer things on top of where the um, the latest puddle sort of of water has dried or dried with a heat gun and I just keep kind of going over that and over that until I decide where it's going to be. Uh, I don't tape this down because I really enjoy the rough sort of uh, loose edges around the corners and around the whole thing. I just did a little couple splatters there which I thought looked good. Um, I do end up cutting down a piece of it but if I could would have thought I had I would do it maybe in a bigger five by seven sort of platform and then cut down as I need to because I really do like the sort of for this kind of a project to make it a loose sort of um, just random edge so I'm gonna go in here with a teeny tiny um, number two brown brush, watercolor brush, and I'm going to use the Gansai Tombi Starry Colors, and I'm going to use the gold, uh, let's see what it is. It's this sort of middle gold color. It's more yellowy, and it's actually one I don't use a lot, but I thought it looked really good with the blue. Um, it's the yellow gold. And so I just go along the corners that are uh, where the sort of hard edges of the watercolor are that are have been dried and some other places. And I just place a little teeny tiny little bit of the paint there to try to make it look like a vein in a, you know, a piece of marble or something else. And then I sometimes I go back and kind of blend it out to make it a little bit more yellow and, and add that sort of gold back. 
uh, this is completely random and honestly um, it's hard to describe because it's very uh, relaxing and very enjoyable for me to do something like this and if I could do this all day long it'd be great so now that that piece of the background has dried completely I'm gonna coat it with some uh, anti-static powder and I am going to use my Misty to um, add my stamp sentiment and heat emboss it onto it. First, I'm going to use um, my Tim Holtz Tonic Trimmer to uh, cut it down just a teeny bit. I still have those loose edges, which I like, but um, I did trim it down so I could mount it on a piece of gray cardstock that I believe is from Basil. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I'll have things linked below the video and on the blog post. Um, so I'm going to layer those things in the different thicknesses of font. And um, that is from Avriel. And it is called the Thanks Thanks <laughs> stamp set. And it's great because obviously you can never have enough thank you cards. So I used my uh, Versamark um, ink to ink those three thanks up thank ups thanks ups and I am just adding some gold super fine embossing powder here and I really uh, I couldn't decide I mean I really wanted it to be solid so I ended up going back and adding some more um, I apologize for being out of frame there but I do want to make sure that it is solid because I want it to read through a lot of those blues and I wanted them to be light blues and um, I got a little carried away on the color because it's just, it's just so pretty. I didn't want to uh, <laughs> didn't want to uh, take away from it too much, but that's the way the stamp looked. I was really happy with it and it comes with several different sentiments that you can put underneath those if you'd like. And I used the one that script one that says so very much. So I'm going to, next I'm going to use that um, and stamp it with the Missy and do the same thing and just heat emboss it in gold. And uh, even though the paper did warp a good bit, I did um, heat it up very well on the back and then kind of bend it around and it did, um, it did lay flat. And it's a pretty thick, the cold press is, a, is usually pretty thick paper. So um, it was, uh, it was really easy to, you know, to make sure that it stayed. Plus, once you adhere it to the base, you know, your your base card, your card base, or um, in this case, a piece of fun foam, it uh, works out okay. So I've got this little piece of fun foam that is thinner. I'm going to use some Deluxe Nouveau adhesive on it and add it to the back of that watercolored embossed piece and then glue that, add it to my gray piece of background card base and then adhere the whole thing down once that um, sits under some weights a little bit and I'm gonna adhere the whole thing to my white card base. Before I do that, I've got just some random sequins and these are honestly, um, some of them are from a, you know, a collection of specific sequins that were from Studio Calico. Some of them were from a collection of sequins that were something else. Some are just um, sort of mirror sequins, and it's really hard to to remember which ones are which because I have them separated by color. So it's hard to. Um, to tell you which ones those are but I use my jewel picker which is a fantastic tool and some Gina K connect glue and add those to uh, the front of the card sort of trying to tie them in with a little bit of the colors that are underneath going from kind of whites to you know and, and darkening down until a darker blue that is the final product and I really appreciate everybody's support and watching the video. Thanks so much. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them at the end. And if you'd like to subscribe, that would be wonderful too. 
Have a fantastic day. Goodbye.